Have you ever wondered how your test results are calculated? After my students finish a practice test, they always ask me, how well would I do in the real exam? Well, in this video, we're going to look at exactly that. I'll show you how to calculate your score for each part of the exam, and then how to predict what kind of level you would get in the real Cambridge exam. Let's get started. Hi everyone, my name's Anu from Super Easy FCE, the best place to be for weekly tips and tricks to pass the B2 first certificate exam. Don't forget to subscribe to start learning all of my secrets today. Okay, so your statement of results when you do the real Cambridge exam looks like this. You will get between 140 and 190 marks for each part and also for the overall exam. All the parts are equally important, but if you fail one of them, it doesn't really matter. Your overall score determines what level and what certificate you will receive. How to calculate your overall score? Your overall score is calculated by adding all of the individual scores together and dividing by five, and then rounding to the nearest whole number. So for example, imagine you get 161 for reading, 175 for using English, 182 for writing, wow, <laughs> 150 for listening, and 165 for speaking. You will add all of those numbers together and divide the answer by five. I got 166.6, so round up to the nearest whole number and you get an overall score of 167. So does this mean you've passed? Let's find out. What level will I achieve? If you get between 140 and 160 marks, you've achieved B1 level. For B2 level, you will need more than 160 marks. Anything between 160 and 180 is okay, and you will get a grade C or a grade B. It is possible to get a C1 level in the first exam if you get between 180 and 190 marks or grade A. However, this does not mean that you can skip the CAE exam. You can see here that there is some overlap between all the levels and getting grade A in the exam is similar to getting a very low mark for the CAE exam. So in my previous example, you achieved 167, which is a pass at B2 level grade C. Notice that you can get lower than B2 level in one or more of the sections in the exam. It's okay. You just need an overall score that's higher than 160. Next, let's look at the individual parts of the exam and calculate each of those scores. Reading. Now, reading is actually not a separate paper. It's part of the reading and use of English exam. There are seven parts in this test and the reading mark comes from part one, five, six, and seven. Be careful. Lots of students think part one is use of English. It's not. It's actually part of your reading score. Correct answers in parts one and seven are worth one mark each. Correct answers in part five and six are worth two marks each. So there are 42 possible marks in the reading section. Next, use this table to find out which level you've achieved. You need a minimum of 24 marks to get a B2 level in the reading section. Anything between 24 and 37 is a B2 level and anything above 37 is C1. If you achieve 10 or less than 10 marks, your performance is below B1 level. The use of English section consists of part two, three and four of the reading and use of English paper. Correct answers in parts two and three are worth one mark each. In part four, answers are divided into halves. 
So if you get one half correct, you will receive one mark. If you get it completely correct, you will receive two marks. There are 28 possible marks in the Use of English section. Once again, use this table to find out which level you've achieved. You need a minimum of 18 marks to get a B2 level in the Use of English paper. Anything between 18 and 24 is a B2 level and anything above 24 is C1. If you achieve seven or less than seven marks, your performance is unfortunately below B1 level. Listening. This is probably the easiest one to mark. All correct answers in the listening paper are worth one mark each. There are 30 questions in the listening exam and so there are 30 possible marks in the listening exam as well. As before, use this table to find out your score. You need a minimum of 18 marks to get a B2 level in the listening paper. Anything between 18 and 27 is B2 level and anything about 27 is C1. If you achieve eight or less than eight marks, your performance is unfortunately below B1 level. Writing and speaking. Now writing and speaking are a little bit more complicated. So we'll look at these two in another video. I'll link it up here and in the description box below. Want an easier way? If you think this process is just too long, don't worry. I've put a link to my website where you can use my free calculator. Just fill in the marks that you got in your practice test for each section and the calculator will instantly tell you what your Cambridge score would be. I hope this video made the planning process a little bit easier for you. If this video was helpful, make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe by clicking the red button down below and click on the bell icon to see all of my future tips and tricks. If you haven't already watched my last video on planning to write an amazing answer, do that now. I promise you, you won't regret it. Keep practicing and I'll see you next time. Bye.